Today we're going to look at um, how we come up with the unit circle. So we learned recently that if you take um, a circle and you've put it in the coordinate plane um, and you have a triangle drawn in that circle, that the hypotenuse is the radius, um, and we're looking at this angle as the theta, we know this point is x comma y, we know that this distance here represents the x, and then this distance here represents the y. We also know that in relation to the theta, this side is the opposite, this side is the adjacent, and this side is the hypotenuse, but we also know that this is the radius. So the hypotenuse and the radius are the same thing. So then what we did is we figured out that, well, when you have a point in the coordinate plane, you can essentially draw your triangle but to find the hypotenuse, you can use r squared equals x squared plus y squared, because that's really your a squared plus b squared equals c squared, your Pythagorean theorem. So sometimes we choose to write that as r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. <coughs> so um, then when we look at what is the sign in relation to this, our sign is opposite over hypotenuse, but our opposite is our y value. So y and our hypotenuse is the same as the radius. Our cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is the x value over the radius. And then the tangent is our opposite over adjacent, which is the y over the x. So we end up having these things that we can use. So if I give you the point 4, negative 5, Right, so 4, negative 5 is here. Uh, we know the radius would be 4 squared plus negative 5 squared equals r squared. So 16 plus 25 equals r squared. So that gives us 41 equals r squared. Um, so then r is the square root of 41. Right? So then if we wanted to find sine, cosine, or tangent, we could do the sine of theta is y over r. So instead, you can always draw this picture, but I could also just use this formula and not have even drawn the picture and just know that the y value is negative 5 and the radius is root 41, and then we times by root 41 on top and bottom. So then you would get negative root 5 root 41 over 41. Right? So what we do is we use this idea that the sine is the y over the r, the cosine is the x over the r, and the tangent is the y over x to help us when we have our special right triangles. Now, hopefully you also remember that we have three special right triangles. Um, <clears throat> it's technically two of them, and then one of them is just reoriented. So we've got our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Across from the 30 is the 1, the hypotenuse is 2, and across from the 60 is the root 3. We could reorient that so that we've got the 60 down at the bottom left. Then this is 1, 2, root 3. And then we have our 45, 45, 90. So these are our special triangles, right triangles rather. So now what happens is that we can take these and we could shrink them, right? So if I take this... Uh, right here, and I take that and I shrink it down so that it has a radius of 1, right? So I've shrunk it, this has a radius of 1. Well, if that has a radius of 1, to go from here to here, we really divided by 2. So that means from here to here, we have to divide by 2. So we get 1 half. And then from here to here, we also have to divide by 2. So we get root 3 over 2 is how we would write that. Okay. Now we can do the same thing when it's reoriented uh, with the 60 degrees. So that means that everything would be cut in half. So if we cut 2 in half, that's 1. If we cut root 3 in half, we call that root 3 over 2. If we cut 1 in half, that's 1 half. And we can do the same thing for our 45, 45, 90. So then we have this is, now when we cut, um, when we go here, we're not cutting it in half. I guess I should have specified that we're just shrinking it so that it has a um, radius of 1. So here we're dividing by root 2. So to go from here to here, 
We have to divide by root 2. Well, remember that we're rationalizing, so I have to put root 2 over root 2. So then we end up with root 2 over 2. And then since the 45s match, then the two sides across from them match. So this one is also root 2 over 2. Okay. So then if we were to put this into a circle like we just had, so we've got our circle in the coordinate plane, <clears throat> And we know that our circle is radius 1, right? So we'll call this 30. So then we know, if we look at our 30, that our x value, we've gone right by root 3 over 2, and we've gone up by 1 half. So this point is root 3 over 2, 1 half. If we look at our 45 degree triangle, we know that we've gone right by root 2 over 2 and up by root 2 over 2. This is 45, and this gives us root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. And then if we look at our 60 degree angle, <clears throat> we know that we've gone right by a half and up by root 3 over 2. So this is 1 half root 3 over 2. So then what happens? is that we can repeat these same triangles just in the four different quadrants. So we can have these four triangles for the green. Um, we can have, my drawing skills are off today, uh, those four triangles for the orange, and then we can have these four triangles for the purple, right? Now, when we go in the different coordinate, now this would be your, well, let me show you. This right here would be 60 degrees, and we call that a reference angle, right? So that means from our original, from starting at zero, we've gone all the way over here, right? So we've gone from there, and we have 60 left to get to 180. So you do 180 minus 160 or 60 rather, which gives you 120. So the yellow angle is 20 degrees, but the reference angle that we have for that green triangle is 60 degrees. So because we're in the second quadrant, I went left, so the half is a negative, and then root three over two. Okay? And then we do that same kind of idea with this one, except where we've gone left and down, so both of them are negative, and then both of them are, not both of them, the x is positive and then the y is negative. So what ends up happening is we have this thing called the unit circle that will look like this and it gives us all of our values for our special right triangles. So this would be 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, this would be 90 degrees, <clears throat> 120 degrees, 135, um, 150, 210, 225, 240, 270, 100, 315, 330. This would also be 360 because you've gone around a full time, right? Oh, I missed 180. Sorry. So that gives us our angle measurements. Now, if we look here, these four represent the same triangle, they're just different orientations of it, right? So these would be the same points, and notice that they are all 30 degrees. So our 30 degrees, if you don't remember, was root 3 over 2, 1 half. So then this would be negative root 3 over 2, 1 half, and then negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half, and then root 3 over 2, negative 1 half, okay? And then all of these, I don't have a highlighter, are 45 degree angles, okay? So then this gives you root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and this is negative root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and this would be negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2, and then root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. Okay. 
And then we've got our 60 degrees that we can look at. So all of these ones are the same. Now remember on each one of these that our radius is one. This is why we call it a unit circle because it has a unit length of one for the radius. So that's why we refer to it as a unit circle. Okay. So with our 60 degrees, we've got this as one half root three over two. This will be negative one half root three over two. Negative one half, negative root three over two. And then one half, negative root three over two, right? Now, if we look, oh, uh, before we go on. Now, if we look here at our um, axis points, so let's color them something different. So we've got these four. These don't create a triangle. Um, so we look at them kind of in a different way. We use that the sine is y over r, the x, the cosine is x over r, and the tangent is y over x, right? So then what happens is we have this point here, we've gone right by one and up by nothing. For 90 degrees, we've gone left and right by nothing, but we went up by one. For 180 degrees, we went left by one, but up by nothing. And for 270 degrees, we've gone left and right by nothing, but down by one. Right? So now, if you remember, if we think back to this part here, where we've got sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, and tangent is y over x. If you have a unit circle, that means that r is 1. So that, that means that we have y over 1, because our radius is 1. So that just turns into y. For cosine, we have x over 1, so that just turns into x, and then our tangent has no r value, so it just stays as y over x. So what happens on your unit circle is that your sine turns into just y, your cosine turns into just x, and your tangent turns into y over x. So if we look back at this unit circle, we can simplify and figure out, well, our sine of any angle on here is going to be our y value because our radius is really that unsaid one, right? So I'm gonna raise that part because we're not gonna use that. Um, so our sine is just our y value. So that means that the sine would just be our y value, right? So each one of these would be the sine of that particular angle filling in the ones that we don't have. The cosine would be the x value. Well, our x value is these ones, right? So that would be our cosine value. Okay. So our tangent would be the y over x, so that gets a little bit more complicated, which I'll show you in just a minute. Okay. But what that does is it simplifies it a little bit because our radius is 1. So the sine is the y, the cosine is x, and the tangent is y over x. Okay. So then what I do to help myself remember this, so we've really got that sine of theta is y, cosine of theta is x, and tangent of theta is y over x. So to help myself remember this, I think of the phrase y sin like in a religious sense, because it's extra fun. Take your extra fun and go to hell. Right? So this means that the y is the sine, the cosine, so the C for the cosine is the extra fun. And then you've got the tangent, so the take for tangent, your for the Y, extra fun. So you end up with this. So I use this phrase to help me see and remember that sine is Y, cosine is X, tangent is Y works. If that doesn't help for you, then you don't need to use it. But that is where that part comes from. Now, if we go back up here, there's a way that we can remember these points. So notice that these points are just being replicated in the different quadrants, right? So if we look here, we've got 
root 3 over 2, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, 1 half, root 3 over 2. So what happens is it turns out we can use our hand to help us remember these points. Okay? So if we go and we look here, so our three points, we're just going to look at the first quadrant. So we've got 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, 1 half. 45 degrees is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. And then well, we have 1 half root 3 over 2. Right? So if you take your hand um, and you draw, this is a horrible hand. Oh, no, that is not helpful. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Huh. So even worse hand, but just work with me. Uh, maybe I don't know. I'll try again. Maybe we'll just... There we go. I sort of traced my hand. <laughs> oh, God, guys. I am not in it very good with art yet in my life. Okay, so this represents our first quadrant. So your first finger represents zero degrees. Your second pointer finger represents 30 degrees. Your middle finger represents 45 degrees. And then your ring finger represents 60 degrees. Okay. So if you were to put your 30 degree finger down, so your hand will kind of look like this is your 30 degree finger down. Okay. That means you have three fingers on the left side and one finger on the right side. So notice if we go back and we look at this point, we have three on top and one on top. So your fingers are representing the top of the point. So this is root three and then the square root of one, but we know the square root of one is just one and then everything is over two. So these, your three fingers, come from here, which represent that, and then your one finger represents this, right? And so your fingers are representing in a root, and then everything is over two. So that's why we have over two. Now, if we put our 45 degree finger down, so if we put that finger down, you've got, right, so, that means that we've got two fingers on the left and two fingers on the right. So that would mean that we've got, oh, that's bad. Should take one tie letter. We've got two fingers on the left and two fingers on the right, which notice match with the twos. Both of them need to be in roots. So then this would be root two, everything is over two, root two, everything is over two. Okay, so our twos from there it's in a root and then everything is over two. If we put down our 60 degree finger, oh god, oh guys I'm just struggling with my hands. One and three right so then that was going to be the square root of one which we know is one everything is over two. The square root of three everything is over two. So then this, oh, I already did green, I do orange. I'll do gray, there we go. The one represents the one here. The root 3 represents the root 3 here, and that everything is over 2. So we can use that to help us remember the points, right? Now, the other thing that you need to remember is that we have radians as well. So when we have radians, your 30 degrees is the pi 6, your 45 degrees is pi 4, and your 60 degrees is pi 3. So the way that I remember this is that the 3s and the 6s swap. So 3 goes with 6, and 6 goes with 3, and then the 4s match. Okay. So then, that would help me as well 
with our unit circle. So then you can utilize this to find pieces of information. So then you're going to watch another video about how to utilize this, but this is the theory behind the unit circle.